Semi-dependents are a pain because they're just so sneaky, but there aren't many and once you get to know them, they're super easy to translate. Hi everyone and welcome back to Bam Bass Bat. This is a super quick rundown of semi-dependent verbs. The reason I'm being so lame and calling them sneaky is because just like deponent verbs, these are verbs that look passive in form but are active in meaning. They use passive endings but are translated as active verbs. However, the key difference is that semi-dependent verbs are only passive in form some of the time. They use passive endings for some tenses, which is what we're going to look at now. Basically, they're for the perfect tense and the two verbs that are formed from the perfect stem. If you can't remember the passive endings, go and download this free PDF guide to all Latin verbs. It's a complete reference guide for all tenses, voices and moods, so it'll be really useful when looking at these active verbs that disguise themselves as passives. You can also check out my video on passive verbs and the link for this video is also in the description. Let's look at gaudio. It's one of the most common semi-dependent verbs, so you're likely to run into it at some point. Gaudio, to rejoice or to be glad, has, as you can see, an active first person present form. I rejoice or I am glad. It also has an active form of the present infinitive, gaudere. This tells me that the present, imperfect and future tenses of gaudio are all active in form, and this is really helpful. The perfect stem, however, is passive in form, gavisus sum. This is using the perfect passive participle and the verb to be in the present tense, the way perfect passive verbs are always formed. However, this is still an active verb. It's just in disguise as a passive. Think of it as putting on a facade, like, like a waiter with a customer service face or a voice teacher's used to talk to parents. The real active verb is still there underneath, but it's pretending to be passive. So semi-deponents are passive in the perfect tense, as we've seen from the principal parts. The perfect tense in the passive is formed with the perfect passive participle and the present tense of the verb to be. Remember that the verb to be has to match the person doing the verb. So if it's I, we use some, you, we use s, he, she, it, we use est. As an addition, the participle part, the gavisus, has to match the number and gender of the person or thing doing the verb. It'll always be the nominative as the person who's the subject of the verb will be the nominative. So for the perfect, we get gavisus at um, so Gavisos for male, gavisa for female, gavisum for neuter, gavisos at um, sum. Even though it's active in meaning, it means I rejoiced, you rejoiced, he, she, it rejoiced, we rejoiced, you rejoiced, they rejoiced. For the pluperfect, we still use that perfect stem, so this tense also looks passive. The pluperfect is formed with the verb to be, but in the imperfect this time. This is translated as I had rejoiced, you had rejoiced, he, she, it had rejoiced, we had rejoiced, you had rejoiced, and they had rejoiced. The future perfect is also passive in form but active in meaning. Again, you take the perfect stem, that participle gavisus at um, and add the verb to be onto the end. This time the future tense of the verb to be. These mean I will have rejoiced, you will have rejoiced, he, she, it will have rejoiced, and so on. I'm keeping the active meaning but the form is like a passive. Here are some other semi deponent verbs. The most common, like gaudio, is probably audio or maybe soleo. Luckily, there aren't very many, even at A-level standard, so don't stress out too much about them. Just recognise these ones and be aware that you might see them in the passive voice, but you should translate them in the active voice. And that's all there is to semi-deponent verbs. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know what you think or if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Bam Bass Bat.